Hello everybody, Kyle here, and welcome back to part two of my add-on spotlight series. In this week's episode, we are going to look at map add-ons for the Elder Scrolls Online. In last week's episode, we looked at Minion Add-on Manager, my recommended way for you guys to get add-ons for the game. So what we're looking at right here is Minion, and I've got it sorted by category. So you're going to see the four add-ons right here. We're going to first look at Votan's mini-map, followed by Destinations, Map Pins, and then Harvest Map. We're going to do it in that way so that you get a kind of top-down, comprehensive view of how these add-ons work together. If you want to download any of these add-ons, you can find a link to my add-on master grid in the description below. That will have the uh, name of the add-on as well as the creator. And then as a reminder, you simply go to the Find More tab within Minion and you go ahead and search out the add-on. As you can see right here, some of the top installed add-ons are actually the ones we're working with, including Harvest Maps, Destination, so on and so forth. So I hope you find these very useful and let me know what you think in the comments below if you have another map add-on that you prefer and that you'd like to see me spotlight in the future. Okay, the first add-on we're going to spotlight this week is Votan's mini-map. Now, I'm logged into my character screen as if you're only seeing one add-on. It's my favorite of the mini-map add-ons. There are some other options out there for you to explore. I like Votan's uh, mainly due to its style. It looks very fresh and modern, and it's got some nice customizable features. You actually notice I have an FPS and a ping counter here. These are the standard FPS and ping you can disa or enable within your game settings. However, I've just hid them up in the, the black shading there. It looks very natural, flows with it. You can also choose to switch the clock between a 24 hour and a 12 hour cycle. As you can see, I'm on line at a totally normal time recording this video. Uh, and it's showing a map of the erstwhile sanctuary, which is actually our guild hall. Very nice. And you can see that your, your pointer is moving around, pointing you in the direction your character is facing. It's great if you're navigating dungeons or any other features that have this. Uh, it's just a handy way to kind of get that general view of where you're going. Now, if we go under our add-on settings, uh, that'd be under settings. And at the very bottom of the list, you have add-ons here. Um, that's just something that I should point out too at the start of this video series. You have settings, and that's where you're going to go to customize your add-ons. So under here, you're going to see Votan's mini-map. One thing I would recommend changing with this is if you go down, um, there are a couple options. By default, it will shut off in combat. That's something that annoyed me. I actually have mine enabled, so it will show in combat on. And that's so that when I get into a fight, it doesn't hide my mini-map. Uh, I find it pretty useful to have that map out, especially if you're in like a PvP zone like Cyrodiil. It gives you a little bit more situational awareness so that you know where the local buildings are or something like that if you're looking for a place to hide or ambush, anything of that nature. Uh, same goes for out in the world, too. You don't want your map always disappearing anytime a mob aggros to you. I'm not exactly sure why it's off by default, but I definitely recommend turning that on. You also have the option down here of changing the border styles. I leave mine in ESO is what you saw, ESO styling. All also, this is where you have the option to change your time format, so I would suggest you look at changing that as well, depending on whatever you prefer. I think that basically covers it for the settings. Uh, you can turn off the square, you can turn off the clock, you can turn off some of those basic uh, typical visual UI settings. But anyway, that is a quick summary of Votan's minimap. Very, very nice. The next add-on we're going to look at is Destinations. Now, this is an extremely useful add-on as you're questing through the game. So basically, I am just looking at my map here, standard interface that you should be used to. However, I am now under the Filters tab, and this is where you're going to see some extremely useful things. Uh, I will warn you, some of these could be considered spoilers depending on your playthrough. I don't use a ton of these, but they're nice to have as you go through the game. You can enable and disable werewolf and vampire altars. This makes it super useful as you are looking at other maps. Let's take a look over here at Bancorai. Uh, let's click into this zone and now i have enabled a vampire altar so if you're not exactly certain where to go to get vampirism you can turn that on and off another thing you might notice are all these little points around the map those are quest giver pins you might find these annoying to have on but i actually like them as i'm traveling through the world these are quests that i have not completed or actually not even accepted i believe that's a great way to find a quest in a zone if you are actually looking to do a completion sort of achievement where you do let's say 60 quests in a zone this can really help you now eso's got their great setting as is where you know where a questing hub is located but you also might not 
know that there's a quest giver hidden, let's just say a couple clicks away behind some rocks, something of that nature. You can easily find them and complete the quest. Uh, it will also kind of show you how many quests are in a zone, roughly speaking. There's usually more, um, I'd say 10 or so more quests in a zone than you initially see in that achievement. So if it says complete 60 quests in a zone, there might actually be 70 to 80 quests actually located there. Very handy, very cool. There's some other things in there that you're going to find useful. So I definitely suggest that if you're someone that wants to get deep into the ESO verse, trying to get through a couple different uh, achievements, let's say, this is a great one for you. Our next add-on that we're going to take a look at, once again, takes us into the map feature. This one is map pins. Map pins, just like destinations, is going to add more for us under the filters tab. Now, map pins add some maybe more actionable things are actionable at least on a daily basis. So map pins adds things in like sky shards. Uh, you can track the sky shards that you've actually already completed. So looking here at the Gold Coast, here's a sky shard I've completed. If I turn it off, it goes away. Uh, it's really, really, really handy for doing all your sky shard completions. It's handy for tracking your Sigic Rifts. It will show those on the map as well. Make sure you do go through these settings and turn them on because many of them will not be turned on by default. So, for example, uh, the, the Time Rifts will automatically be turned off. Uh, other things we're going to look at here, we've got dungeon bosses. That is extremely useful. Now, if you're within a dungeon, just like any other sort of map, uh, you see a dungeon map, it's going to look, a dungeon map's going to look closer to the erstwhile sanctuary. But if we have a boss here at the end, it's actually going to show where that boss is located. So it makes it very easy to get into a delve or public dungeon, anything of that sort, run right to the boss's location, kill him, get your sky shard, and head out of that dungeon. Another thing you're going to want to toggle on are lore books. So if you're on that never-ending quest with the Mage's Guild to grab all the lore books in his own, you can see here I have not done... Uh, I've not done the Rift's lore books, and you can toggle those again on and off. You can... That's the nice thing about these maps, these destinations. You can turn anything off you want. Um, I've got treasure chests on as well. That is not guaranteeing you that there's going to be a treasure chest at that location, but it's saying that more than likely there is one. I don't know if it's going to show it to us in this zone, in this setting. I think you might actually need to be loaded into a zone for treasure chests to show up, but super, super, super handy. Our next add-on actually is going to take us out into the field, so you'll see I've left the house here, and we're standing outside the Way Shrine in the Gold Coast. This one is Harvest Map. Now, this is extremely useful if you are harvesting materials. You'll see here again under the filters pane that we have a couple new options that we can turn on and as I do it the map is getting busier. This is our collection of things like wood, fibrous plants, etc. that we found out in the world and harvested. Now this map gets pretty crazy which is why sometimes I'll actually disable them. Depends on what my purpose is out in the field. Now, you can see here on the map what looks like runes and plants and other things like that. You actually see them there in the distance as we move through. We're going to go head over here. That is the rune icon. So I wonder if we go over here in the world without getting attacked by any beasties. Uh, nothing's there. Let's hit up a couple of these. I'm just going to show this off. Oh, look. There we go. Up ahead. Something to harvest. You got the rune icon. And there we go. We've got some rune stones here. Look, right next door, we've got the uh, solventy or water icon here, and we can collect ourselves some pure water. Now, what this is doing is basically, we have discovered these already, so without, uh, if you have not used the add-on before, your map will not be discovered by items. You can apparently download some pre-used maps. I find that not super to my play through the game it just doesn't that that to me feels a little spoilery for myself if you're about that by all means go forth and use it to me i like to discover the points before uh and let my add-on manually grab the data but this is a great way once you go over and find yourself a new node they'll actually pop up on the on your own map so again you can see here it's pointing me to these locations basically it's just an approximation of where things should spawn. It makes it so that if you're running some sort of loop in uh, whatever map you choose for harvesting materials, if you're running a loop and you discover things, it can kind of tell you from a distance, hey, I should go over here, I should look for something. Nope, nothing there, nothing here. But if I keep running through, eventually I'm a, a bound to find something at a location. Oh, look right here. We've got... Uh, We've got some mushrooms showing up. Very, very useful for harvesters. I'm going to get attacked by a wolf. 
I definitely recommend Harvest Map. It's a great add-on if you're if you're a crafter, someone that's looking to get into crafting. Super, super useful all across the game. I mean, it, it also shows you chest locations. And you'll notice, one thing to point out, that this integrates well with Votan's minimap. So that's why I want to show off Votan's first. You got to see the base functionality, but now you're seeing its use out in the field. That wraps up this week's add-on spotlight. I hope you enjoyed these map add-ons. I find them extremely useful throughout my travels and I think you will too. I wanted to start with add-ons that were very straightforward, that required very little customization, and ones that are very accessible to customize. Simply going under the map tab will give you almost everything you need. One last thing I wanted to point out, I was going to include an extra add-on this week uh, that helped you track surveys, uh, and treasure maps. However, I noticed that this simple tip here, treasure maps, this is within the map pins add-on. This actually just removed one of my own add-ons from the lineup, so I'll be taking that out because it just has the functionality baked in. That is just to say, I encourage you to always double check your own add-on library. As you start to add to the collection, you'll notice some become outdated. Next week, I think we're going to look at user interface add-ons because as I was recording this video, I noticed I was struggling without some of my bank overlay style things. I wasn't having as much ability to customize my searches with my inventory. So I think that's something that's going to give you guys a really ease of use sort of thing or a quality of life improvement. If you like this week's add-ons, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, you can turn on that bell icon so you get notifications whenever something new is posted. If you want to do me a major favor, come check us out on Twitch. That's where I spend most of my time. Again, we stream much Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, all starting at about 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm happy to answer any add-on questions that you have. Come swing by the channel. So, I look forward to seeing you next week, and until then, enjoy your journeys throughout Tamriel.